Can I have your attention, please? Welcome students, staff, and special guests. Today we celebrate Veterans Day, a day set aside to honor all the men and women who have selflessly served our country. A special welcome and thank you to the service men and women of the armed forces in attendance today. Because of your sacrifices for our country, you will always have our lasting gratitude. Your service to country is a true blessing and we will never forget. As we begin to reflect on Veterans Day, our thanks should also go out to those currently serving and fighting for our freedom, both home and overseas. Only 50% of soldiers who serve receive care packages. Our Ranger community can help increase the number by donating to the military care package drive that the Rotary Club is currently running. They will be collecting items through this Friday. Any item donations can be placed in the boxes in the main office and monetary donations can be given to Wendy Schroeder. Please consider donating to the soldiers who risk their lives to protect our freedom. Before I introduce this year's MCs, I would be remiss if I did not thank the Forest Lake FFA chapter led by Mrs. Ward, Mrs. Tozel, Mr. Pollock, and Mr. Miron. Our music department led by Mr. Guidry, Mr. Livermore, and Mr. Zumwald, and our media specialist, Leanne Brockman, for putting on today's ceremony. You and your students' efforts are appreciated by us all. At this time, please join me in welcoming this year's MCs, the President of the Forest Lake FFA Chapter, Ms. Jenna Scarpole, and our Veterans Day Committee Chair, Melissa Ball. Good morning and welcome to the 15th annual Veterans Day celebration here at Forest Lake High School. This event began as a flag dedication, replacing the battered flag in front of the school, and today we are gathered together to honor those who have so selflessly served our country in any branch of the armed forces. This year we celebrate the 101st anniversary of the end of World War I, and since the first Armistice Day celebration in 1919, Americans have reserved November 11th as a day to pay respect to the veterans who are still with us and to remember those who have fallen. Today we would like to give a special thanks to the VFW Post 4210, the American Legion Post 225, and to all the students and staff who have helped plan this event, and especially to our veterans who have served and sacrificed, along with those who plan to serve. Will those who are enlisted or plan to enlist please stand? Let's give them a round of applause. The color guard today is a joint effort of the Forest Lake VFW Post 4210 and the Forest Lake American Legion Post 225. Will the audience please stand and quietly face the colors as the color guard posts the colors? Will the color guard please post the colors?
Please place your hand over your heart and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance, and please remain standing for the national anthem performed by the Forest Lake Area High School Music Department. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have the honor of introducing our keynote speaker. Specialist Ron Masuda was drafted in 1968 at 19 years old. He served in the Vietnam War at 20 years old. Unfortunately, in March of 1969, he was wounded in the line of duty. Specialist Masuda has demonstrated for each of us how we can truly serve our country. He bravely, he bravely served our country and has continued to give back to our community. He deserves our full attention and appreciation today. I'm honored to introduce a living American hero, Specialist Ron Lasuda. Gosh, I used to be on stage a long time ago, but uh, man, this is pretty cool. This light's getting in my... By the way, I'm not an American hero. I was a soldier in Vietnam. And what I'm going to do for the next 10 minutes is I'm going to try and take you through my world starting in 1968. I'm from a small town in Michigan. Probably never heard of it. It's called Detroit. And you know, I was a badass in Detroit. I was a star, man. I was a stud. I was cool until I got in the service. 18 years old, 19 years old. I was cool, thought I was. Then I got a letter in the mail. A letter in the mail, the first words of the letter said, Greetings. Now, you guys are way too young to know what this is, but some of you older dudes around here knows what that means. That means, can you hear me okay back there, by the way? That means you're drafted into the military. That means you're going into the service. Now, I'm a pretty smart dude. Remember I told you a minute ago how cool I was? You either went into the service or you went to jail. Guess what I decided I would do? I go into the service, pretty smart, wasn't I? Yeah, I was. Go to basic training, a place called Fort Knox, Kentucky. You go for eight weeks. Don't like what they tell you what to do. You know, you eat when they tell you to eat and all those things, and that was okay. Then when you're through with the eight weeks, 
they put you in what's called advanced individual training, which means that they're going to decide, the Army is going to decide what I'm going to do in the Army. Okay? In the middle of the night, a buddy of mine who was running in the office, he was a CQ runner, they call him, woke me up at 2 o'clock in the morning, says, Lasuda, quick, I just saw your orders. What are they? What are they? You're going to be an armor intelligence specialist. I went, what? You're an armor intelligence specialist. I said, oh, man. The next morning when I woke up, I called home. I called my mother. I said, Mom, I'm going to stay at Fort Knox, Kentucky for the next eight weeks. And Mom, I'm going to be an armor intelligence specialist. My mother right away says, armor, what's that? Well, sitting behind a desk. You know, I, you know, everyone was afraid to go to Vietnam. I said, sitting behind a desk. I said, yes, sitting behind a desk. Well, I wasn't sitting behind a desk. Actually, what I was, was I was a scout. That means we went in front of the infantry, all right? Uh, and I walked point when I was there. That's in front of everybody else, by the way. So uh, that's what I did over in Vietnam. Um, so I stayed, AIT, I stayed, uh, stayed there for eight weeks, and we go home for 30 days, and now we're gonna go to Vietnam. So you get on an airplane, and are, am I scared? Hell yeah, I'm scared. I'm trembling. I'm shaking. We land in Vietnam, and of course, it's what you think when you go to a war country. You look down in the dark and you see explosions. You know, it's Vietnam. You know, okay. You land in a really nice area, Tan Sinh Air Force Base, which is really pretty cool. Of course, when you're landing, when you're walking into the air base, there's guys, about 200 of them, standing around. And they have old boots and old fatigues. You know who those guys are? They're getting on my airplane to go back to the world. And so, of course, they make fun of you and hiss at you and call you names. That was quite an experience. Well, now I get to Vietnam, and now they're going to tell me what I'm, where I'm going to go in Vietnam and what I'm going to be doing. Well, what they did was I went to a company called the 11th Armored Cavalry, Black Horse. I was on an armored personnel carrier. I was a right gunner. And the armor personnel carries like a small tank, but it's very mobile. It moves around fast, 35 miles an hour's max speed. That was fun in itself. I was the right gunner. I had an M60 machine gun. That's what I did in Vietnam. Um, my fifth month over there, March 15, 1969, that was 50 years ago last March, by the way. Uh, we were on a mission somewhere, and... Uh, Guess what happened? Boom! Explosion underneath me. Threw me about 30 feet in the air. I hit a mine. Underneath me. Didn't hit anywhere else, but underneath good old Lasuda, I guess. My, my good time, I, I guess. I don't know what it was. But I was okay. I ended up with 11 holes in this eardrum and 9 holes in this, or 7 holes in, in this one. But they wouldn't let me go back out in the field, which I was okay with. Because keep in mind, I'm 19 years old and I'm scared. By the way, in Vietnam, and when you're out in the field, you're scared. Out of eight men that go to Vietnam, seven don't fight. Only one out of eight does the actual fighting. Okay, now take nothing away from anyone that went to Vietnam. Everybody had a job to do. Everyone had it. Some were clerk typists. Some, you did everything over there. I was lucky. I hit the mine. I was in the rear. I was darn lucky. Uh-oh, but, what kind of butt was that? But, I had a great job when I was wounded. They couldn't do anything with me. They didn't send me home. Guess what I did for five months over there? I had the best job in all of Vietnam, and nobody could ever touch it, what it was. The greatest job in Vietnam. Anyone want to care to guess what it was? Anybody? Burn doo-doo, baby. That's exactly what I did. Five months, I was a doo-doo burner. Man, it was a great job, too. 10 o'clock in the morning, I'd go out to the latrine, pull out the, open up the back of it out, 50 gallons of it, pull it out, diesel fuel on it, light a match, and sit there and shoot baskets and play basketball all day. That's what I did. Burn me some doo-doo. I did that for five months is what I did. By the way, a little bit about a Vietnam. Two and a half million soldiers were in Vietnam. 58,000 died, 500,000 were wounded. That was a long time ago. That was many, many, many months ago. Wow, I can't, 
50 years. I can't believe I've lived this long, by the way. So that's what I did in Vietnam. Uh, the last 30 days, they sent me back out in the country. Uh, they sent me uh, out, back out in the field, I should say, because my ears had healed up. And then they sent me on an ambush patrol three days in country left, which they shouldn't have done, but they did. But that's okay. I did it. Uh, it was an incredible experience. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Every year we have a reunion somewhere in a different part of the country. And it's a wonderful time because we see each other. We tell the same war stories. We laugh. We cry together. And uh, it was an incredible experience. We're closer than your own brother. You're closer with your veterans. And uh, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about veterans. Today's Veterans Day. Remember something, guys. By the way, welcome, Forest Likers. I forgot to tell you that. Remember something. Freedom isn't free. We hear all the time about the United States and that we're in different parts of the country. We are the greatest country on earth. What other country do you think you'd want to be born and live in? Any. Oh. Zero, Detroit? Yes, that's a great place. Whoever said that, great place to be from. Yes, it was. But we are the greatest country on earth is what we are. And everybody wants to come to the, to the United States of America. Everybody. But again, you guys hear this all the time. Freedom ain't free. Okay? It costs. There's a cost of freedom. And remember this. And here's something, I, the message I wanted to give some of you seniors. Okay, we're seniors. Are we over here somewhere? I got to talk to you about a real serious thing in life. College is the greatest thing in the world for you. Most of you are going to go to college. Some of you won't. Some because of money. Some because you don't want to. Sometimes you're going to go to trade school. Here's what I'm going to ask some of you to think about. Think about going into the military. And here's why I want you to think about it. First of all, you get to pick where you want to go. You get to choose what you want to do. They'll give you some tests. Okay? And let's assume they're going to make you a truck driver or, or you're going to work on a computer uh, or you're going to fix something. When you get out of the service, you're going to have a great job waiting for you because everyone wants to hire a vet. Because vets are reliable. They're disciplined. But let's assume for a second that you were a truck driver in the Army and you didn't... You said, ah, gee, I don't think I'm going to drive a truck the rest of my life. I think I want to do something else. Ha, huh, guess what, everybody? Guess what? Now you, if you want to go to school, get your butt to school and guess who pays for it? Sometimes you guys go to school. Well, I'm going to go to college. Where are you going? I'm going to go to Bethel. Uh, I'm going to go to Scholastica. What are you going to do? Uh, I don't know. So you go to school for a year or two. You have this incredible debt we all talk about all the time. This is something, and not only that, you can, you can give something back to your country. Being in the military, I don't care, you can ask any one of these vets around here, any one of these guys. They all remember their service. They all remember the people they were with. Some of them have lifelong friends. So seniors, think about that for a second and think about, think about going for your country. Because the older you get, I know the older I get, the more patriotic I get. Heck, when the National Anthem plays, I'm crying like a baby. I don't know why that is. I just am. You get older, you get like that. So that's the message that I want to give you guys. By the way, when I came home from Vietnam, I was one of the fortunate few. A lot of the GIs that came home from Vietnam, they were spit on, called baby killers, the great thing about us guys that came home from Vietnam, here's the great thing about it, we will never, ever, ever forget a veteran. I have bought veterans meals at restaurants without even letting them know who I am. I don't need to know that. We will never forget our veterans because of what happened to some of our guys. I've got several friends from Minnesota that tell me in the small towns they were in, they, they, they got the abuse is what they did. And I, I'm lucky because I, I was in a big city, and when I came home, I just kind of filtered into the crowd, and I didn't have to go through that. And I was so darn lucky is what I was. I was so lucky. So remember this. This is Veterans Day. This is for us guys. And I'm proud to be an American, and I'm proud to be a, a veteran, and I thank you very much for us, Lake. Thank you.
Thank you, Specialist Ron Lasuda, for sharing your story with us today. We now invite you to join the Symphonic Winds Sinfonia Orchestra and Cantorai in performing Salute to the Armed Forces, which includes the Army, Navy, Coast Guard, Air Force, and United States Marines. Please stand if you or a family member has served in this branch of the military when that branch is shown on the screen. of silence. Thank you. The combined Symphonic Winds, Symphonia Orchestra, and Cantorai will now perform America the Beautiful.
please stand until the colors are retired. Would the color guard please retire the colors? It is important to honor those who have served our country and to appreciate the great sacrifices our veterans have made for us. Thank you for coming to the annual Veterans Day celebration. This concludes our ceremony. Will all students please report to your fourth hour.